The 1970s were very colorful years in some corners of the sneaker world. Running shoes from brands such as New Balance and Adidas had confidently grown out of their design infancy. The decade ended with blaring colors, thicker padding, chunky soles studded for traction, and different materials such as mesh and foam. Basketball shoes, however, rang in the new decades still stuck in adolescence. As we moved into the 1980s, thicker padding and some loud team colors were the boldest evolutions you could really expect to see on the feet of pro ball players. Now, we often talk about sneaker technology on this channel and we loosely throw around phrases like innovative design and new technology. And as you know, sometimes new technology is simply marketed as innovative and it's up to the consumer to decide if it really performs well or stands the test of time. For this video, we're looking at an early point in sneaker history when basketball shoes underwent a revolution, not only at the hands of businessmen or cultural icons, but in the minds of designers. Designers who would soon establish a whole new standard of both performance and aesthetics. I bet if you're a fan of this channel, you're probably thinking, oh that's easy, that's Tinker Hatfield designing the Jordan 3. But it's actually not Tinker and not Nike at all. In fact, we're going back to a time when Jordans didn't even exist. The sneaker we're talking about today is one that truly took the game to the next level. The Adidas Forum. The task of designing the form fell on the shoulders of a French designer named Jacques Chassang, who started working with Adidas on the ZX running line in the early 80s. Guys, I'm not French, so I do apologize on the pronunciation of his last name. I'm um, Jacques Chassang. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I can't be sure. I won't say it again though, I'm just gonna call him Jacques. Using the blueprint of tried and true Adidas models such as the Concorde and the Americana, Jacques took this new project very seriously. His approach was to identify what basketball players needed in a shoe. Jock studied all different types of players on the court and he talked with them and their coaches. Jock zeroed in on the heel of the shoe as his focus. He considered the methods of physical therapists who would use elastic bands to provide support for the heel. This was the basis of his crisscross ankle system, which would be the signature design element of the Adidas form. The crisscross overlaid ankle panel may look like a fairly standard sneaker design to us now, but compared to its blocky tube-like predecessors, this added a whole new type of visual flair to the form. Not to mention that asking players what they wanted and needed and inventing new technologies for those players, that's a new level of consideration that paved the way for the industry's brightest upcoming designers. I feel like every sneaker brand says that about their designers, that they were the first to actually talk and speak with an athlete, but I feel like, I feel like that's common sense, but brands always say that. Another innovative piece of technology that was added to the forum was called the Dellinger Web. Created by three-time Olympic runner and Oregon Ducks track and field coach Bill Dellinger, the Dellinger Web was created specifically for running shoes, and it was featured on existing running shoes like the Adidas Atlanta and the Adidas Oregon. The web was a crisscross patterned interior of the midsole that is said to absorb 10% of the impact of the wearer's foot hitting the ground, dispersing that energy throughout the midsole, mitigating the energy needed for the athlete's next stride. So I've actually got some sneakers with the Dellinger webbing on it. Um, the first one is the Adidas Special. Oh, that's kind of bright. I don't think you get, hold on guys, let me fix it real quick. And if you look on the uh, midsole there, you will see the, the webbing and it's supposed to, yeah, it's supposed to, I guess, produce an energy return. The other one I have here is the Special. And it's the same deal. The thing about these though, man, I'm in the dark, look at me. Is there, both of these, both of these sneakers are the most uncomfortable sneakers I've ever owned. Um, and so, I'm not sure if that Dillinger webbing is actually real, if it's just printed on there, or maybe it's just not that advanced because it's such an old technology, but these two sneakers are the most uncomfortable sneakers I've ever owned. Speaking of comfort, this video is sponsored by Hefe Lux. As I mentioned in that previous clip that you just saw, these joints right here are not the business when it comes to comfort. So let me go ahead and swap these flimsy insoles out for the premium comfort that is Hefe Lux. All right, so I just got to pull them out of this shiny package they sent me. It says made in comfort. Why would they lie? Boom. And that's them right there. Let me go ahead and just take this out. Nope. Just real quick, guys, when you open it up, uh, you'll have a, like, let me just get this in focus. So there you go. You can see uh, the sizing on there. So this is 12, 11, 10. I'm a size 10, so I got to cut around that line with the pair of scissors real quick. All right, once it's all cut, you just put it in here. 
like so. And boom. Now I have boost technology inside these old 70s inspired runners. You guys see that? Bang. And look at me now. Styling and comfort, baby. One crazy thing I want to share with you guys about the forum. When it dropped in 1984, it was the most expensive basketball shoe in history at $100 a pair. The crazy thing about it is the price tag only added to the shoe's appeal. This wasn't some corny, costly gimmick like putting a computer in a shoe. The Adidas form was received as what it truly was, a well-designed delivery of a premium performance product. It's pretty telling when the public reception of a really expensive sneaker is so positive. So positive in fact that a young Michael Jordan wore them during the Olympic USA basketball trials in 1984. Even years after signing with Nike, Michael Jordan still thought Adidas was the superior choice. Adidas marketed the forum as the successor to the widely popular Adidas Top 10, and it quickly became the most premium basketball sneaker that Adidas had to offer. Adidas would eventually release low and mid top versions of the silhouette, but like you guys know, it wouldn't be long before the Adidas form would lose its spotlight in favor for more modern sneakers from other brands like Nike. And as the years went on, efforts to renew excitement for the Adidas form fell short, with the exception of a collab Adidas did with the American designer Jeremy Scott in 2002. He took the sneaker and printed $1 bills all over the upper. Not a terribly exciting collab in my opinion, but it pays tribute to the sneaker's expensive price tag. It gave the Adidas form a bit of attention, but nothing like we've seen in the past couple of years. Adidas relaunched the Adidas form as part of their Adidas original line in 2020 to massive success. Thanks in part to Retro's 80s basketball shoes being back in style and the brand's ability to secure some huge artists to co-sign the silhouette. That's the mic we use. That's the light we use. Anyways, um, we're, we're on Instagram, guys. Um, give me a follow on there. I'll put my handle here. Nachos is obviously Nacho Average Finds. Um, but hit me up in there, hit me up in the DMs. I love responding to you guys and hit me up with some video suggestions. If you just want to talk, talk sneakers, uh, hit me up. I'd love to hear from you. So hit me up and uh, back to the video. One of those artists is none other than Puerto Rican rapper Bad Bunny. Released in March of 2021, the Bad Bunny and Adidas Form collab would change the history of the form forever. Debuted in a The First Cafe colorway inspired by Bad Bunny's morning coffee, the sneaker features shades of brown and tan like coffee, while a third eye sits at the top of the tongue. I'm pretty sure there's some conspiracy theorists who are foaming at the mouth to use this as evidence that Bad Bunny is in the Illuminati or something. The sneaker is filled with details like neon blue and green laces, and not only a double tongue, but interchangeable tongues. I thought it was really cool that one of the tongues has straps on it that are in the shape of the Puerto Rican flag, which is obviously a direct tribute to Bad Bunny's heritage. Underneath the Velcro on the strap reads, Yo visto así, which is a saying that Bad Bunny has that basically translates to, this is the way I see it and I don't care what anybody thinks. The whole thing with this shoe is that it's puffy and thick like an old early 2000s skate shoe. The sneaker definitely reminds me of the early 2000s skate shoes like the Osiris D3 and some Etnies and the, the, the SXL. You, sometimes some skaters would rock it with like two laces in them and um, it's the same thing with these Bad Bunny forms. You can put both the laces in it with a double tongue. It just looks extra puffy. Yeah, I love that about these sneakers. Several months later, they released a pink Easter version of the shoe, which I could go into all the details about it, but it was really just a money grab because the form really, really, really took off after this collab. They recently released a black version of the sneaker, inspired by Bad Bunny's memories of having to wear a school uniform of the same colors. And guys, it's really thanks to the Bad Bunny forms that this shoe has been on the radar of so many casual and diehard sneaker fans alike. The shoe's crossover potential is clear and I expect the Adidas form to be a top sneaker for years to come. With the right partnerships and general release colorways, the Adidas form is on track to becoming one of the biggest comeback stories in sneaker history. I urge you guys to check out some of the other collabs that Adidas has done for, with the Adidas form. Um, the End collab is really dope, I love that one. Um, the Eric Emanuel one is pretty dope too. I just can't do with the McDonald's sign. But for me, I'm just gonna try to keep getting my hands on one of those high top um, Adidas form, the OG ones. And they put the cream laces and the cream midsole to make it look vintage. I need a pair of those. Um, but hey, if you wanna learn more about the history of footwear or just about sneaker culture in general, um, I'm gonna put a link to a video here. And I usually uh, put like a playlist of all our um, sneaker history videos. So I'm gonna put it there. 
But before you guys leave, if I, could, if I could just please ask you guys to please subscribe to this channel if you've been watching us for a while. If this is your first time maybe watching another video, then consider it. But if, you've been, if this is like your third, fourth watch, please, please consider subscribing to this channel. It would really, really help us out. And uh, with that being said, guys, I am out of here. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day, morning, evening, night. I don't know where you are in the world or what time it is, but I hope, you, I hope it's a good one. All right, guys. Peace.